Joe Rogan's just done the biggest deal in independent media history, as well as saying he wants nothing more to do with the left. So why is the left falling apart, and why can't it utilize powerful advocates like Joe Rogan? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Remember, we make exclusive content every week for our supporters. You can watch our Tucker Carlson conversation that you will love. You can join us when we talk to Schellenberger, Glenn Greenwell, Vandana Shiva, Jordan Peterson. We have great conversations every single week and we'd love you to be a part of it. If you can join us, do join us. Now, Joe Rogan has just done the biggest deal in independent media history. He's survived some of the biggest attacks that the legacy media have ever tried to impose upon an independent voice. The N-word attacks, the horse paste attacks, the, he shouldn't be allowed to have this audience. Why are people listening to Joe Rogan? Hey, that's not fair. Why are you listen to him? We got a newsroom in shiny. I put a tie on. People are infuriated, but there it is. The genie's out of the bottle. It's no question now that Tucker Carlson and Joe Rogan are the biggest voices in independent media, and people are losing their trust and leaving legacy media resources in their droves. They're losing viewers. They're losing power. They're losing advertising. Could there be a connection between this decline of trust in the legacy media and the breakdown of neo liberal values, or what Joe Rogan referred to as the lunatic left. I know Joe Rogan, I've been on that show a few times, and I think he's a great person, and I would say that he has what you'd call liberal values, like he just wants to sort of be left alone, doesn't care about people's identities or cultural choices, believes in democracy and representation and voting and all that kind of stuff. So why is someone that the left could have grabbed and turned into a hero rejecting the left? Is it because the left has gone kind of crazy, lost all its values and principles, and doesn't mean anything? Anything anymore. Let's have a look at what he said in the framework of this being the most significant voice in independent media. Well, I used to be a part of the blue bubble. I, w I was 100% a left-leaning person who lived in Los Angeles. I suppose I was as well. I worked in Hollywood, worked in British media, and when I was part of that establishment, it seemed kind of ordinary and necessary that your values would be Democrat or Labour or progressivism. And for me, that was always based on kindness, that everyone has the right to express themselves how they want to. And I kind of, I suppose, didn't notice how the rights of people that had traditional values, like, say, Christians, were always alloyed to power structures that were regarded negatively. How the framing around pro-choice versus pro-life or pro-gun versus anti-gun were always skewed in the media in a very particular way. And how one of the perspectives that we were never offered is decentralization. Allow different communities to be run differently according to the principles and values of the people that inhabit that community. That was oddly never discussed. And now you have a left that's taken progressivism into some interesting areas which I frankly don't trust. I don't think the left is is all about looking after what they would call vulnerable communities. I think the left is about censorship and centralized authoritarianism, corporatism and globalism. That's what I think defines the left now. And if you look at the great experiments of the left, Maoism, Stalinism, perhaps it was always this way. Perhaps all of us massively understood that aside from a cultural blip in the 60s, where it's like, oh my God, hippies, Black Panthers, women's rights, and the uprisings of trade union movements, maybe the left has always been about authoritarianism. I don't know. Certainly Joe Rogan's rejecting it. Over time, this is what we're seeing. So over time, you and I, who used to be on the left, are now like, where's the left? Where are you guys? You yeah. guys are so far away! <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people feel politically homeless. A lot of people that would say, I'm not a Republican, I don't think, or I'm not a conservative, or I'm not a right-wing person. I mean, what are you if you say, I believe in free speech, I believe in communities being controlled by the people in them, I believe in leaving people alone, I believe in minimum government, I believe in opposing rampant corporatism and extremist capitalism, particularly as it's practiced on a global level. I believe in freedom to worship, freedom to identify, freedom to love, love freedom. I believe in freedom. And I recognize that other people's version of freedom might be different from mine. And if I leave you alone, you leave me alone. Is that cool? What's that now? Yeah, I yeah. can't even see you. Yeah, yeah. You're out of your mind. Even if you look at the idea of Tucker Carlson's recent trip to Russia, it's the left that's saying, well, this is treason. He shouldn't be allowed over there. Russia are the baddies. That's what the right would have said 20, 30 years ago. He's a traitor against our nation. These are the kind of tropes and ideas that were not of the left. Authoritarianism, take the shot, all of this emergent authoritarianism 
communism in the name of cultural progressivism makes me feel that it was never about freedom. That the left was never about freedom. Certainly, it doesn't seem to be about freedom now. Yeah. Why are you just accepting this? Because it, it's, a, it's a noble thing to blurt out so everybody goes, you're on the right team. That's what it is. Above all, the left used to be about supporting working people against the establishment, whether that establishment was the state or corporations, which were largely believed to have captured the state, which is still what I actually believe. But there's no way that you could say that the left are the party of working ordinary Americans, ordinary British people now. It's elitist, it's progressive, it's exclusive, it's condemnatory, it's patronising, supercilious and haughty. They clearly represent professional, educated, city-class people. There's no doubt about it. If you see someone in a white van flying the flag of their nation, the left hates those people. It's not like, oh my God, what are we doing to San Francisco? It's not like, oh my God, why are we letting these violent criminals out of jail? It's like, yeah. oh my God, why are we defunding the f police? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You can't say any of those things. Do you say any of those things? But you you're just said it. Whatever you think about those issues, the fact that we can't talk about them is the biggest problem. Shouldn't free speech and the ability to communicate be a shared value across all political spectrum? I would say the side that wants to shut down debate are not the goodies. Whatever your view is, if you're like, I believe the opposite to Joe Rogan on everything. Early release for criminals, compassion to people, belief in true reform. Even if you absolutely believe in that, you should be willing to have a conversation about it. We all should be willing to have a conversation. Otherwise, what are we ultimately going to get? We're going to get conflict and fracture and the breakdown of cultural values. And I start to wonder if that is the name and the point of the experiment. Austin people are great people. They're really nice. They're nice. They're not heads. They're not Hollywood people. They're not lost in this fake world of leftist ideology that everybody's trapped in. They're just people. They're just regular people, man. I've got to say that when I first went to Florida and met all the people that I work with at Rumble and people that are conservative, they're often Christian, they believe in traditional values, and you can ask them outright, are you a racist? Do you believe that white people are superior to people of other colours? And if people go, no, I don't believe that, well, what are you going to do? Oh, you're a liar, you are a racist. I mean, what, like, what, if people are being secretly racist, well, then if you're not going to trust anybody's views, what I found when speaking to conservative people is they don't care what I believe in, they just want, basically, to be left alone. Now, I'm sure we could tear each other to shreds over the right to bear arms, or pro-life, pro-choice values, or I'm sure that I could argue with numerous people on numerous subjects but the fundamental principle of being able to freely and openly discuss our values that shouldn't be up for negotiation because that leads to hysteria when Tucker goes to Russia to speak to Putin it leads to censorship, it leads to the legitimization of controlling social media spaces, it leads to government interventionism, it leads to being told things like war is the only route to peace it's leading to a kind of madness these blue bubbles where everyone's gone insane. Well I used to be a part of the blue bubble. I was 100% I never voted Republican my whole life. I was very left-leaning. Even from a strategic perspective, if you can't get your movement together to get Joe Rogan on your side, you're a mess. Like, this is someone that could be going out to bat for the Democrat party. That could be going, hello, I'm Joe Rogan. Here's Gavin Newsom on my podcast. Here's Joe Biden. Joe, wake up! Joe, wake up! But to sort of going, we don't like him. He's a meathead. He's an... Like, oh my God! Who do you want to exclude next? And as I've said to you before, I think it's become an elitist authoritarian organisation that doesn't like working or blue collar people. That's been insidiously creeping in for a while from Clinton and Blair in our country onwards and that was enshrined in policy in our country at least and in yours. You saw different kind of financial deals and deregulation took place under Clinton. Basically, ordinary people got abandoned so the left had to justify that by saying those people we should abandon them and who we're looking after is vulnerable minority groups. That's what it's done in my view in order to give itself a moral backbone which it now lacks because it has no raison d'etre, it has no purpose, because it's essentially the same as any party that goes, we're here to support the interests of big business and globalism. There isn't anything else they're offering except for, oh yeah, we think these groups are getting a hard time. And those groups historically have been getting a hard time. But again, most people are willing to say, you do your thing, we'll do our thing. That, along with an ongoing dialogue, is the only solution to this as far as I can see. Especially with like any social issues. When it comes to financial things, I'm a little bit more conservative, but at the end of the day, I'm way more left than I am right. But California went nuts, man. It's gone like full communist. It's out of its f***ing mind. And their approach to law enforcement is so insane. It's so insane. The no cash bail, the letting people out for committing violent crimes, the f and st not stopping people for stealing up to whatever money it is. What is it, $900 now? I think they raised it. I think they made it a little higher. San Francisco is non-existent. 
San Francisco, most of San Francisco is emptied out of like big chain stores and big department stores. Uh, they, I, I, would, I wouldn't even do stand up there anymore. It's crazy. It's, they yeah. ruined it. Amazing and interesting. And again, if someone who plainly speaks to so many ordinary Americans in the way that Joe Rogan does in an unprecedented way can't be reached, that is a barometer that should be paid attention to. If you're part of the Democrat Party establishment and you watch this, you mean, that idiot, then you are unelectable. I'm in the middle now. I'm in the middle. I'm in the I middle. Never, I never thought I would ever never, say that. Never. Never. It, never. It only happened in this last year. Right. Exactly. I just went, I can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? People that you thought were aligned with you are like now, now like mad at you about shit. They're in a cult. They're in a cult. It's, it's got all, I mean, Mark Andreessen, who's a brilliant venture capitalist guy, explained it to me. In, in, in very clear terms, like what the definition of a cult is, how you can get excommunicated, how you get shamed for having differing opinions, the group think, the whole, he's like, it's a cult. And he's right. He's yeah. 100% right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just hard to say because then people in the cult will attack you. You get excommunicated. You yeah. get treated like you're a Nazi. When did this transition take place? Perhaps the most identifiable and obvious point was during the pandemic, when left and right bifurcated at a point when everyone could and was supposed to come together. When the cult of wearing masks and taking medicines and posting on TikTok and shaming people and then acknowledging, wait a minute, minority communities are particularly vaccine hesitant. How do we move the pieces around on the board to facilitate that? The point about a cult is an important one because that is where authoritarianism and the refusal to engage in discourse really take hold. If your ideology is quaking, shaky, and not solid, then you don't want to engage in conversation because you know that you don't have a robust ideology that can withstand discourse. Ultimately, what's clearly necessary in this age of mass communication is decentralization, is the ability for communities to be governed differently according to the will of the people that occupy those territories, whether they're physical or online spaces. The idea that you can now have a country split down the middle with one half oppressing the other half is ridiculous and laughable. The pandemic period was when authoritarianism became normalized. Initially, well, you have to stay indoors because you're protecting other people. There's no evidence that it protects other people. There's no evidence that social distancing works. The whole argument fell apart and I think helped us to recognize that what neoliberalism in the form of this peculiar new form of leftism was masking was authoritarianism, a desire to control, a desire to signal virtue rather than practice principles and actual virtue. And if the left can't house the biggest voice in independent media, a person who's plainly not a communist because he's just done a massive, massive media deal, who says he's never voted Republican in his life, who clearly speaks the blue collar America in a way that's unprecedented. If you can't get in alignment with that voice, then your political movement, I would say, is on its way to expiring. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments in the chat? Remember, we make content every single day for our members, like our exclusive Tucker Carlson video. You can join us for conversations and ask questions to some of the proper journalists we speak to. So if you can, join us there. But in the meantime, please stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.